Hi everyone and welcome to my channel, Dr. Coco Spedmonics. Today I'm going to be going over polycystic kidney disease and you might think this is a super random video, like why is she making this? Um, because I definitely thought this was like just, you know, not like a high yield, but maybe like medium yield disease, I don't know. Um, but I still am really glad that I studied it and made up uh, this kind of like memory hook because I had um, maybe like five questions on step about this disease specifically. Uh, and I thought like, you know, after the first one, that would be it. And then I got another one and another one. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize this was like such a high yield disease. And so like, just in case that happens to you, I want to make sure that you watch this video and that you know this um, because I actually felt pretty confident about these and I was surprised um, that I remembered anything from studying this one very weird disease. So key concepts to know, um, the way that I remember polycystic kidney disease, so poly, many, cysts, right? Polycystic and kidney, obviously we're in the kidneys, but if you have multiple cysts in your kidney, think about that as like a ballooning. And so if it's in your kidney, think of that you could have ballooning pretty much anywhere, not just in your kidney for this disease. Um, and specifically, I seem to love questions about this, but so we're thinking of ballooning and we're thinking of ballooning in other parts of the you know, body. First, I'm gonna think, okay, brain. It's gonna be, you know, I'm gonna go from top down. That's how I do my ROS, that's how I'm gonna do this. So in the brain, what could balloon? Well, we could have an aneurysm, maybe a berry aneurysm, okay? Next, I'm gonna like go down. What am I thinking of all? Well, let's think of the heart. So what would be a ballooning in the heart? A mitral valve prolapse, right? That's where the valve would balloon the opposite direction and cause a prolapse to where your blood would go from your left ventricle up to your left atria. Now I'm gonna keep going down. What am I thinking of next important organs? Oh, let's think the liver. So you could have hepatic cysts um, in your liver. And keep going down, let's do one more, um, your GI system. So what would be like a ballooning in your GI system? Diverticulis diverticulosis, where you'd have little um, pockets that can get inflamed um, in your GI system and fill with like poo and things, um, cause lots of pain. So if you didn't think of polycystic kidney disease as ballooning pretty much anywhere, Instead of memorizing, oh, it can cause berry aneurysms and hepatic cysts, you can think, okay, from the answer choices that I've been given, which one of these seems more like a ballooning of something? And that will help you a lot on your test questions. Next thing that seemed to be super high yield is that um, there's the difference between autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, polycystic kidney disease. And I think first day goes really hard into this. And I honestly, on test, the test didn't remember any of it, like which one's in the, you know, cortex or medulla, but that was way less yield than knowing um, if you have a question stem and they're talking about polycystic kidney disease, whether they give you a CT or they actually tell you that there's cysts in the kidneys, um, and the patients like in their 40s, it's going to be autosomal dominant, okay? Dominant for adults. Versus if it's autosomal recessive, that's going to be in a kid. So that's going to be something that they um, started having problems a little bit earlier because it's uh, congenital. So autosomal recessive is in kids, and I think kids go to recess in school, so recessive. And another super high yield thing that I got questions on is that this is associated with Potter's sequence. And knowing the different parts of Potter's sequence was pretty important. And the one that they love to ask about is pulmonary hypoplasia. And the reason that they get the pulmonary hypoplasia is because they have oligohydraminose. And um, I also like struggled a little bit with oligo and polyhydraminose and like what caused it and everything. So I'm gonna do a slide on that next. Um, so then the two T's are for twisted skin and twisted face. And then they have esophageal dysmotility and renal agenesis, as well as it's, you know, if they do have a kidney, then it's gonna have um, the cysts. And so recessive is in kids, adults have dominant. 
polycystic kidney disease. And then oligohydraminose and polyhydraminose. So if you think about when the baby is in mom, the baby's gonna drink its amniotic fluid and then it's gonna pee it out and then it's gonna drink its pee and then it's gonna pee it out again. Like it's this cycle, right? Where it just drinks and pees and drinks and pees. It's like a weird little fish in water. I don't know, like little embryos are kind of weird. Um, and so if you can remember, baby drinks amniotic fluid, pees it out, drinks it again, and we think, okay, oligohydraminose. So there's not enough amniotic fluid. Well, why is there not enough amniotic fluid? Is So the baby is drinking the fluid, it's not peeing it out, right? So if you drink everything and you don't pee it out, there's going to be less fluid left around the baby. So if we can drink it and we can't pee it out, this is going to be a renal issue, okay? So this is going to be like that Potter sequence, um, having autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease. We're talking about a renal issue. The baby can drink it, can't pee it out. And this could also be like a renal agenesis with the Potter sequence or um, very common, you can get a posterior urethral valve. And so that because of that posterior valve, um, you're not going to be able to pee out that fluid. Or if you do, it's going to be like a little bit more difficult. And that's more common in male babies. And then polyhydraminose is like too much fluid, right? So why would we have too much fluid? Okay, so they can't drink the fluid. So maybe like they can pee it out. We're not sure because they can't even get it in. So what would make it to where a baby could not drink the amniotic fluid? And that would be either an esophageal or neurological issue causing the baby to not be able to drink the fluid, okay? And so then there's a ton of fluid around the baby because they either have a tracheal esophageal fistula where they can't um, drink the fluid or they have maybe um, anencephaly where they're missing part of their brain so they cannot uh, have the signal to drink that fluid. Hopefully that helped you guys. Um, when I break it down like that and think, okay, with too much fluid we can't drink or not enough fluid we can't pee, that seemed to help me a lot as far as differentiating these two and figuring out the actual problem in the baby. And hopefully it helps. And if it did, please like and subscribe to my channel.